In this video, I'm going to count down my top 10 most wanted WWE slash WWF Mattel Elite figures. I'm willing to bet that some of the figures on my list also made yours. Stay tuned to find out. What's up, friends? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to... If you're new here, welcome my friend. My name is Matt and this is Nerdzoic. On this channel, you'll find a secret recipe of action figures, nostalgia, and just general nerdiness. If that's your thing, go ahead and double ax handle the subscribe button and come back every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern time for a new video. As you know by now, I love me some Mattel Elites. With the Legends line coming back to Target later this year, I thought it was a good time to start making a wish list. I made a wish list for each of the big three Attitude Era companies. I already posted my WCW and ECW versions of this, which I'll link up here somewhere-ish for you to take a look at if you haven't seen them yet. The bottom line though, guys, the future is ripe with possibilities right now. Just like my previous wish list, the prerequisite for this one is that you haven't been made as a Mattel Elite yet. Some of the guys on this list have in fact been made as Jack's classic superstars, but in this nerd's humble opinion, it's time for an update. In fairness, the reason that many of the figures on this list have not been made in elite form yet by Mattel is because they're not available to Mattel. That means that they're not under a WWE Legends contract. So a lot of these aren't possible right now. The hope, though, is that Mattel and the WWE can get these guys under contract or get their families to agree to letting us have an action figure. After all, what better way is there to ensure your place in history than having an action figure? All right, let's do this. Number 10 is Jesse the Body Ventura. He was last seen in Classic Superstars. I think we got him in both Series 21 and 25. One, he was a wrestler. One, he was a commentator. What I want is a new version of him as a commentator to go with this Gorilla Monsoon Elite we just got last year. I totally need these two sitting at my old school commentator booth. His outfits are always pretty eccentric, so just pick one. As long as it comes with a feather boa, his sunglasses, and a do-rag, I'm good. Number nine is Chainsaw Charlie. I know this is probably a sin, but my first introduction to Terry Funk was Chainsaw Charlie, I think. Now I'm wondering if I saw him in ECW first. I really don't know. One or the other. Last time we saw Chainsaw Charlie was in 2008 Classic Superstars Series 2. But, like I said, time for an update! Old Chainsaw would of course come with the pantyhose mask he wore and a chainsaw. Bonus points if he comes with a box that he can come out of. Because anyone who comes out of a box is automatically over. Everyone knows that. Number 8 is the One Man Band! What? Sorry. One Man Gang. Oops, last seen in Classic Superstar Series 6, way back in 2005. I think we are more than overdue for a redo here. Looking at his Classic Superstars, I think this looks more like Conrad Thompson than it does One Man Gang. So maybe we can get one of those cool face scan things going. When I first got into wrestling, he was already Akeem, so I totally miss seeing the One Man Gang era live and in color. But I did go back and rent the two VHS version of WrestleMania 4, so I got to see him then. And I I like that guy. I don't know what it is about old big fat wrestlers that always amused me. Him, Earthquake, later Yoko. I don't know how they did that. As a fat guy, no clue. Number seven is Farouk Assad. Yeah, you might know him only as Nation of Domination Farouk, but before that time, he was Farouk Assad. I don't think we've ever gotten a figure of him as this. So basically, he came out in this blue colored gladiator gear. I remember seeing him and saying, what the hell is that guy supposed to be? But he had Sonny with him for at least some of the time, so it was okay. Seriously, he looks so stupid that we need to get this in plastic to make sure we never forget. Would you dress as a gladiator if it meant Sonny circa 1995 was in your corner? I bet you would. Number six is the wild man, Mark Marrow. He never had a classic superstars and he hasn't been seen in figure form in forever. Most of his Jax figures were post-mullet when he was boxer Mark Mara with the short hair and getting beat up by his wife who left him for Brock Lesnar. So yeah, I want the full-on wild man Mark Mara, mullet and all, entrance vest. I'm guessing a sable be released to go with is probably too much to ask for, but wild man should be good enough for now. Number five is Bad News Brown. We haven't seen him since his 2008 Classic Superstar Series 13. As a wrestler, this dude was seriously underappreciated in his WWF run. I know that in Stampede, he was a main eventer for Stu Hart, and he was a pretty big deal there. He was a legit badass, too. He had like a double, triple, 
the gray black belt in judo. And there's a story about Andre making a racial remark on a bus and Bad News pulling him out of the bus and threatening to fight him and Andre stayed in the bus afraid of him. When Andre the Giant is afraid of you, you're one BMF. As far as accessories go, let's get the sewer rat that he used to do promos with for some ungodly reason, as well as a trash can with the BN painted on it. Number four is Ahmed Johnson, who has not been seen since the bone crunching action figures back in 1999. When this guy first came to the WWF, I was a huge mark for him. His finishing moveset of that stiff looking spine buster followed by the Pearl River Plunge was one of my favorite finisher combinations. It still is to this day. Whenever I create myself in WWE 2K, that's my finisher. As far as the version of Ahmed I'm talking about here, I want original Ahmed. Red tights, red pads. I think he wore pads like literally all the way up his legs. He had pads in really weird places at least. As far as accessories, you might as well give him like an ambulance or a stretcher because dude was always hurt or hurting somebody else. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here all week. Number three is a very long overdue figure, and that is Mr. T. As far as I can tell, we don't have any official wrestling figures in Mr. T, aside from just an old school galoop. He needs to come with the robe he came to the ring with in WrestleMania 1, as well as some of his many, many chains and his WrestleMania 1 tights. Number two is the Doctor of Style, Slick. During the golden age of managers, Slick was still up there as one of the best right there with Jimmy Hart. I mean, Bobby was a level of his own, but Slick was up there with Jimmy and whoever else was around those days, like kind of blacking out. But yeah, he was a pretty awesome manager. He hasn't had a figure since his LJN figure, people. He needs to come with one of his signature fedoras that can go on sideways. If we end up getting him, I'm going to have to break and buy a boss man so I can have him pose next to each other. Honorable mentions, I like to see a brother love, but I want to see a Bruce Pritchard version with his yellow something to wrestle with shirt since the brother love figure that he had in Classic Superstars is uh, ridiculously expensive thanks to the awesome podcast. By the way, love you guys. Other honorable mentions include The Genius, not Joe's brother, you know, and Bruiser Brody. Even though he never wrestled in the WWF WrestleMania era, he was before that if I'm not mistaken, I'd love to see a Mattel figure of him. Number one's probably going to come as no surprise. It's Owen Hart. I'm sure everybody knows this, but Owen passed away way back in 1999, falling from the ceiling on his entrance to the ring. I was actually watching it live with my friend. It was it was pretty scary. It was very surreal. I remember thinking it was all part of the act. Uh, it's crazy, and it's really sad. It's pretty terrible. I look at him as a father, and I look at his kids growing up without a dad, and it's awful. Unfortunately, the thing that really stinks about it is Owen's legacy can't get remembered because Martha wants nothing to do with the WWF. If by chance Martha or his children want to do something, I hope that a company like Super 7 or Storm Collectibles reaches out to them and we can get an Owen Hart because he is one of the most underrated wrestlers ever. He could have been so huge. If it wasn't for like being in the era of The Rock, Hogan, Michaels, Imagine Owen Hart in the era we're in now. Imagine Owen Hart in AEW. He'd fit right in. It's just one of those really awful wrestling tragedies. But I'd love to see a figure of him made because I love Owen. We haven't had a figure of him since 99, meaning we never even got a Jax classic superstar of him. He doesn't really even have like a definitive great Jax figure. Honestly, I'll take any Owen I can get. But in a perfect world, let's get him with one of his Hart Foundation jackets, like the 97 version when they were all together and have him come with a Slammy Award just because. Again, I know this is never, this one doesn't even have a chance of happening as a Mattel Elite, but Super 7 Storm Collectibles, you guys ever get a chance, put all the money you make towards the Owen Hart Foundation and let's get that figure made. All right, I showed you mine, now you show me yours. I mean your list, you pervert, what the heck? Down in the comments below, tell me who's on your list. I wanna hear about it, and I wanna hear if anybody on my list would have you going, Yes, please. Even if there's no chance of it happening, let's pretend there is. Tell me about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, check out the WCW version and the ECW version. And if you're not already, go ahead and smash subscribe right here and come back again for new videos. Until that time, stay cool, stay nerdy.